Good evening, everyone. Um, take these away. And take these away. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is Celso Battaglia, Astronomy 10. This is an uh, introduction to astronomy, summer course, intensive. And today is our first chat room. Yesterday for, was just introduction and and get make sure that everybody was on board um, with the orientation and you know how to navigate through the course. Um, and I uh, have four of you here. And I would like to start every single chat room to remind students. Usually I don't do that over spring and fall, but summer in intersection is important. Um, so I will just go through what are the required assessments that you have to try to work and their due dates. So let me start to show that I'm in the module part of the course. So I have a first module that has uh, very interesting links, but um, it's not part of the uh, the content necessarily. Uh, the first one is general information. You have a discussion here, who am I? It's just as a matter of allow you guys to introdu introduce to one another. Uh, we have more of that discussion um, in spring and fall, not so much in summer, but please be welcome uh, to, to open that discussion and put information about yourself. And here's topic number one that should be focusing today and tomorrow. I always start a module with a general introduction indicating what are the main objectives and what you're supposed to learn in that particular uh, topic or in that particular chapter book. Uh, so basically in chapter one is an overview of the universe in, in small scale, in large scale. And when, when I mention universe in small scale, is what we can see uh, in the night sky, basically. So in, in, the, in the night sky, we can see planets. We know there is a sun out there. So there is a solar system. And there are also stars that are relatively close to us. In fact, all the stars you can see in the night sky, you can uh, pretty much establish distance to all of them up to about 3,000 light years. So 3,000 light years is, is nothing. It's very much small distances when you compare with uh, millions and billions of light years, which are um, uh, the, the standard uh, scales when we uh, embrace the universe in large scale. So uh, in, the, in the very uh, introduction, we uh, emphasize all the different uh, players in our course. So we start with uh, our solar system, what type of objects we can see in the solar system, and then we realize our solar system is part of a galaxy that is uh, hundreds of thousands of light years in dimension. And our galaxy not, is not the only one in the universe. In fact, there are uh, trillions of galaxies out there uh, based, based on, on recent statistics. And so the universe in large scale is organized in clusters of galaxies that themselves organized in super clusters of galaxies. And, and that is how we portray and see the universe in large scale. So uh, the chapter one is more like a tour through the universe. And the best way to, to assess this tour and to travel and, and get to have an appreciation of the place or the, the, the habitat we, we are, we use um, in, in, uh, an approach that is uh, scaling uh, these dimensions to, uh, to, dim to, to scales that we can comprehend, that we can understand. I'll give an example. Um, if you take the sun, which is a relatively small star, but is uh, just to have an idea, the sun is 100 times bigger than, than our planet Earth. So if you take the sun and you compress the sun to the size of a pinhead, 
the closest star, which is 4.3 light years away, Proxima Centauri, is another pinhead that is <laughs> 15 miles away. 15 miles away. So if you lose a pinhead in the floor, like probably I would right now, and get lost in the carpet, uh, so the other star would be 15 miles away, another pinhead, and that is the closest one. So when we, when we look up to the sky and we see all these varieties of stars, um, we cannot grasp how vast and how empty this universe is unless we, we work with this data. So chapter one is, is a lot of that. You have a little bit of math, but not algebra, but it's just math using scales, basically. And introduce uh, basic distances like uh, light years, which is the distance light travel in one year. So light is the fastest um, uh, object moving in our universe. It has a speed of 300,000 kilometers uh, per second. And so if, if you set up a, a laser beam, that laser beam in one second will cover 300,000 kilometers. So if you allow this laser beam, laser beam to be uh, ongoing for an entire year, so the distance it will cover, uh, instead of a, a name, a large number with several zeros, then we simply say one light year. It makes our life much easier. And also uh, astronomers use another uh, scale in our solar system, and that is part uh, 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 astronomical unit. So one astronomical unit is the average distance of Earth to the Sun. So then you can think that if you take the Sun for instance and you put one Sun next to the other, and in fact if you take 100 of these Suns and put them together, at the end of the 100th Sun you can place Earth. That gives you an idea how distance Earth is in respect to the Sun in proper scale. And some of the pictures that I will show you uh, kind of uh, give the wrong information on how uh, objects in the universe are organized. So chapter one is basically that, and we were supposed to be focusing on on that uh, on this material yesterday and today. Um, again, it's more an overview of what's going to come and an introduction to the scientific method, which is the method science used to describe. Uh, nature. What science does is not to provide absolute truth about anything, but is a window that allows us to describe what we see, to describe the universe basically, and to unfold laws and try to interpret these laws with uh, mathematical language. So this is the scientific method. But what do you need to do? So uh, homework number one so if you click on homework number one that is due on June 25th, so we have probably six days or so to complete that. So you click on homework number one. And then you have, uh, you have questions. Our place in the universe is a location in time at its center, at its edge, unknown because there is no center to the universe. So um, this is true, there is no center in the universe, so basically in chapter one we say, hey, you know, uh, the Big Bang Theory describes how the universe starts in a very small, dense, and hot state, but there is not such a thing as a center in the universe. So since there is not a center, there is not an edge, there is not a, uh, a center, and is a uh, location in, in, in time. Uh, is a location and a time. So that's the question number one, and you can do uh, several times and submit several times if you don't like the grade. The scientific method is a process by which scientific, uh, scientists prove theories to be uh, known facts or gain confidence in theories by failing to prove them wrong or show all theories to be wrong or test the ideas of Aristotle. Um, so Based on what we learn in chapter one of, of the scientific method, which answer would be uh, the greatest one? Now, if, if you guys are not comfortable with the question and you are not agreeing with the solution, again, you can submit several times. 
you can always uh, use this chat room to ask questions and then we can uh, we can discuss them so this is pretty much homework number one you can do several times and is due on the 25th and the other work that you should be focusing to is group discussion my cultural background this is due earlier in June 23rd which is Saturday right is that correct Saturday I think I put all this discussion to be closed on Saturday so I can release a grade on <clears throat> on Sunday 23rd yes yeah, Saturday there you go so and in fact tomorrow I will uh, read some of the posts and start grading them so you click on on, on on this link and that will take you to what you need to do so I, I go on to describe what archaeoastronomy, ethnoastronomy or cultural astronomy uh, basically is um, it, it's, a, it's a very cool in fact it's a very cool uh, uh, line of knowledge that incorporate uh, astronomy incorporate biology paleontology, archaeology, everything, um, social sciences, uh, all together in one big task, and that is to understand how astronomy and the celestial objects interact with early culture and, and help to determine their behavior or somehow shape their behavior. Now, we'll spend the following two weeks diving into this new brand of science. In fact, it's just one week. I have to fix this. To explore the subject more vi uh, deeply visit the site and then I have more information if you want to read more about it uh, here's what you need to do you have to write right here right so you see somebody already put information in there and I need to grade that but basically you are going to write uh, my ethnicity or religion or a story my grandparents told me because that's the whole point is. So we have to specify what's your um, ethnicity, what's your religious background. And then in the second paragraph, like Tuan, Tuan Do, he said, my religion is Buddhism. Okay, so that's simple, right? And then the second paragraph, uh, there are, th these are three astronomy topics that I found in my religion book or myths or that my grandmother told me. And then you list three aspects of your religion or your sacred book or whatever that has to do with astronomy. So what I wanted to do is to go in these books and try to find out the ast astronomical aspect of it. And then the third part, I would like you to go to this website, which is maintained by Professor uh, Andrew Fracknoy, which which is one of the authors of the book we are using, and uh, try to find uh, the particular culture or myth that you are uh, discussing and see if you can grab some more argument. Um, and then and use information provided by the author to in increase your dialogue. Because my experience and our experience is when you when you uh, try to provide information about astrolo uh, astronomy, you always uh, describe what that is based on your own cultural background. So what I would like you to do is to use not only the information that you have, but also uh, how, uh, which other information can you add that might uh, enlarge your horizon and your understanding of how astronomy uh, modulated or or impressed or or, or help to uh, shape um, the development of your particular religion and then and then and then you have to write a comment on some of your classmates posts so and and that's how I'm gonna gra grade uh, all of you so some of you wrote a lot some of you not a lot but uh, the problem is not how how large your your sentences are but the content of it so it's one thing is just to say a sentence quickly without too much thought and the other one is really go deeply into um, the subject for instance if I if I am an uh, if I like Hinduism I might go easily find um, remarks about the moon 
and about the polar star or about um, some of the nakshatras which are the some constellations that happen to be in the path in the path of the moon so i might find all this information and i can take sentences of it and put in this discussion but um, since we are learning astronomy uh, I would like that discussion to go into a level that you 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 put aside uh, some of your uh, cultural background and look at these objects as astronomical objects and try to figure out how the astronomical object with its characteristics somehow found way to your religion to your moral values to the term the way you are in a way. So that's the idea of this discussion, okay? And depending on time, because summer everything goes too fast, I'm going to write comments uh, on the discussion as well. All right? So those are the to-dos that are coming up and will be closing soon. So if you go to what we, go, we are going to discuss tomorrow, um, it's a little bit different, but it's also closing up uh, quick. For instance, uh, this extra credit is supposed to close on Friday, June 22nd, right? Uh, that's, that's June 22nd. It, it kind of, uh, it, it's, it talk about dark energy, which is one of the uh, subjects that were briefly discussed in chapter one. So go quickly on it. Um, the, the article that you are supposed to read is not that big. It's a small article and that's it and then you read and then you post your comment on it again extra credit is always good because it gives extra points that's the point of extra credit okay and then as well as in chapter two you have a homework that you need to do but see um, the discussion is the same the discussion is the same and and then on june 25th we initiate um a new a new discussion okay all right on monday so let me uh, do you have uh, do you guys have any questions so far no i'm good okay good yeah i'm fine thank you all right So uh, here is uh, some interesting thing. So we look at this picture. It's a picture of not just one galaxy, but two galaxies interacting with one another. And these two galaxies are spiral galaxies. Um, you, you, you look and you see there is a central bulge area, and then you have spiral arms, and both of them are in the process of merging. So one of the things we are going to learn when we get to the end of this course is when we think about the universe in small scale, which means the scale on, of not super clusters of galaxies of hundreds of millions of light years, but few million light years, you know, like our cluster of a galaxy, our group of galaxies, let's say, that includes Milky Way and Andromeda galaxies, they are relatively close. In, in, in this smaller sample of the universe, of the local group of galaxies, uh, the force of gravity is very important and dominant. So these galaxies will merge, they will interact, they will provide some dynamic um, motion that you can keep track of it using uh, technologies astronomers uh, have developed. But so, and, and, and this is an example of this merging, right? You have two galaxies, they are merging. Now, um, if, if you go on the contrary, let me see, I think the last picture is what I want to say. Look at this. When, when you look at the universe now in, 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 a, in, in, in large scale, so, um, in fact, this shouldn't be here. I don't, I don't think I have that picture in large scale. But when you look at the universe in large scale, the scale of superclusters of galaxies, we see something different. It's not, it's not a concentration, it's not a collapse of material uh, guided by gravity, but 
instead is an expansion of, of material, an expansion of the universe, and that is being driven by what recently astronomers discovered and labeled dark energy. So we have these two things going on. So if you think about a small sample in space of the universe, you have gravity dominating and you have these ga galaxies merging. But when you go to large scale, the space itself um, uh, uh, flows and is spring energy um, that for a better term astronomers have called dark energy and that is responsible for uh, expansion. Now in our solar system, which is pretty much in our backyard, uh, we have planets like here is a picture of Mars and you can see clearly that Mars has several features. It has a geology um, like our planet Earth has geology too, it has mountains, has craters, have um, our planet Earth has a, a very active geology, has plate tectonics, uh, Mars doesn't, Mars uh, is just one plate only, but Mars has volcanoes, Mars has had lava flow, Mars had uh, water flowing, now it's all dry, but Mars is one of these uh, components in our solar system. Now, <clears throat> This uh, picture here represents an expanding gas. This expanding gas is coming out of an exploding star. So this is an, uh, a stellar corpse is the result of a star that exploded, and we call that explosion supernova. And we are going to see that in more detail um, in about three weeks. So a supernova is the end of life of a massive star. So a massive star, after completing its evolutionary cycle, um, the star explodes, and as a result of the sudden and magnificent rele uh, release of energy, this energy is capable of producing heavy atoms. So look around yourself, uh, look at your body, for instance, you have iron you have magnesium, you have all these heavy elements, um, you might be wearing some gold, I don't know, um, or you might have some gold next to you, certainly in your computer you might have some. So all these metals are made of a very small, tiny particles. They were manufactured inside stars. So different type of stars, depending on their mass, they will evolve differently and they will produce the end of their uh, evolutionary cycle um, is it, it comes with the production of atoms and some of these atoms are released in the interstellar medium in the medium between stars and then and then if conditions are good new stars are going to be formed out of this reprocessed material out of this newly fresh formed uh, atoms. So if, if you could think that as the universe evolved and age, um, the new generation of stars that are formed, they are formed with a slightly larger amount of metals. They are uh, infused into the interstellar medium as a result of these uh, explosions. So now this is a nebulosa, nebulosa uh, nebula too except that this nebula is not the result of a, an exploding star. Uh, in fact, this nebula indicates star formation, is a nursery of stars. So when astronomers see gas out there in the space, uh, we have to analyze with detail what type of nebulosity that is. Is, is, a, is an expanding shell that might be the result of an explosive center, which might indicate the presence of a dying star, or this nebulosity is in fact some gas that happened to exist in our galaxy, and if the conditions are such that gravity can pull this gas in and initiate the star formation, then, then uh, the, the, the characteristics of this nebulosity 
is um, are entirely different. So <clears throat> this uh, picture is the picture of Orion Nebula, and Orion Nebula is a site of star formation. All these little blue dots you see in there are newly formed stars, and more stars can be seen if you if I could expand. I don't think I can. Yeah, I can't expand that. It's not a PDF. Um, uh, there are small dots or black dots in there, uh, sort of a cocoon, if you will, um, of very opaque gas that inside this opaque gas there is a star information. We don't see the star, but it's there because we can uh, detect it in different types of wavelengths. So uh, astronomers use tools to collect information, to collect uh, data about celestial objects. And these instruments uh, have a name, telescopes. So there are different types of telescopes. Uh, one, uh, some types, some telescopes are similar to the ones we have in our observatory. And, and they are optical telescopes, ground-based telescopes. Uh, but also, astronomers sometimes um, need to observe in different wavelength bands. And then for that, they develop the technology, spatial technology, that send the telescope up in space. And then from the space, they can observe objects without the interference of our atmosphere. Um, so our atmosphere not only introduces uh, features in the light, that we collect and observe, but also uh, depletes that light as it interacts with gas of our atmosphere. And that's our blue dot, our planet, our home. And, um, and here's the planet compared with the moon. So the moon, our closest uh, space object, if you will, that is not handmade. So the moon is the closest one but the moon has a size that is about a quarter size of Earth, right? And the moon is located at a position that is about 30 uh, Earth diameters away. So if you take Earth and you put 30 Earths one next to the other, at the end of it, you can put a quarter size moon in there. So just this picture uh, helps us to understand why eclipses don't happen all the time when the moon happened to be in between uh, Earth and the Sun, or when the Moon is in, in the furthest point of its orbit in respect to, to Earth. And we are going to focus on that uh, two days from now, when we study eclipses. So here is a picture of uh, uh, the planets in our solar system. The planets themselves are in scale. So uh, I, um, the dwarf planets are shown with their size drawn to scale. So uh, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars, the scale is correct as far as their size is concerned, but not the orbit. So these planets, first of all, they are not always aligned. Let me show you something here that might help to visualize our planetary body. Look at the moon over there in the sky. If you go outside now, if you have, if, if you are close to a window and if you are facing south, south, see the south, and if you go to the window, look outside, you might be able to see the moon exactly in, in the shape that is being shown here. It's a waxing crescent moon. But what I would like to show is our solar system. And... There you go. So here's our solar system uh, showing the inner planets. So the sun, the sun is over there. Right? The sun is over there. Uh, I don't know what this bin is. I think this is a bug in my software. So Orion is right there. You see Earth and Venus and Mercury and Mars all going around. You saw a comet passing by a while back, didn't you? Let me see if I can go back there. No, I, I'm not going to do that. But all these little dots going around represent asteroids. So between the orbit of Mars and the orbit of Jupiter, that is not appearing here, so there are um, 
a bunch of a terrestrial or rock type object called asteroids. And I can go to the same feature and expand that. To the outer solar system. So the outer solar system uh, show the the gas the gas uh, giant planets Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. The asteroids are not showing here, but they should be in this orbit right here. So I'm trying to uh, get closer, Hasselin. And then you have the sun over there, the sun rotating faster. And then let's go back to. Um, so in this uh, simulation here, all these asteroids are gone. So the terrestrial planets are showing right here as little dots going crazily fast. We can't barely keep track of them unless I reduce. The time scale, uh, let's go for hours, maybe. No, even that way, it's not appearing. But if we My software got frozen. So here's a depiction, um, a rendering, artist rendering image of what our Milky Way should be and where the sun is located. So when we go outside and see all the stars out in the night sky, uh, these stars are pretty much closed. They are, if you look at my, my uh, pointer here, uh, the stars are very much 3,000 light years away. So the whole dimension of this galaxy, our Milky Way, the whole extent edge to edge is about a hundred thousand light years, one hundred thousand light years, right? One hundred thousand. Now, three thousand. So let's take the thousand, one hundred. So this is one hundred, right? So how many trees can be fit in this one hundred? That is the amount of uh, space through throughout which we can see stars, basically, up to three thousand light years, and we see only the brightest one. Okay. That's our Milky Way and our, uh, the position of the sun in there. But the Milky Way, our Milky Way galaxy, is part of a local group of galaxy. Look at that. Here's the Milky Way, and that is Andromeda. And all these little dots here represent... represent uh, a smaller galaxy that we are uh, members of. So there are about, about 46, a uh, few dozens of galaxies in our local group. And this local group is called a, a poor cluster of galaxies. It's a poor cluster of galaxies because there are a few dozens. Now a rich cluster of galaxy is one that has thousands of galaxy thousands of galaxy like the virgo cluster the virgo cluster is a is a rich cluster of galaxy has thousands of members see all of that it's amazing isn't it 
So think about our Milky Way galaxy consisting of 300 billion stars, billion stars, and it stars with their own host of planets. Now imagine Virgo cluster, which is a rich cluster of galaxies with thousands of members. And you see here in this picture a uh, representation of uh, spiral galaxies, elliptical galaxies, all of them with their own dynamics. And as I mentioned previously, in the realm of clusters of galaxies, gravity takes, takes possession. And then gravity is responsible for dragging the motion of all these members. Here's an uh, elliptical galaxy and a spiral galaxy passing by, another spiral galaxy, another spiral, spiral, and so on, so on, so on. Now, the universe in large scale can be better picture here. So now, each one of these dots here represents clusters of galaxies. And then it gives you just a small sample of a locale, if you will, in our universe that has uh, several of these clusters of galaxies called the Great Attractor, because the amount of mass in this region is so significant that our poor cluster of galaxies that our Milky Way is part of it, is being dragged towards this location. And that's why he has this uh, fantastic name, uh, the Great Attractor. The Great Attractor. That's a better picture of it. And which scale are we talking about? 500 million light years, 500 million light years from the sun, okay? So when we see this great universe in large scale, and then we go back to our solar system, you're joking. I mean, our solar system is not, and yet, our planet itself seems to be so big, so big. Now there is a World Cup going on in Russia. My goodness, so damn far away. But it's nothing, you know what I mean? It's nothing. When, when you put your mind into astronomical things and think about in astronomical scale, uh, all of these little pettinesses we go through life becomes nothing. Uh, just think about time. I mean, our life is what? 100 years. We, we will live 100 years. But what is 100 years in, the, in the, the life of the universe? Nothing. Our Earth has been going on for 4.5 billion years. Billion years. And uh, our Sun, about the same time. And stars can live up to 10 billion uh, years. So there are several generations of stars responsible for producing the marvelous compound and, and and conglomerate of objects we see around ourselves. I mean, life on Earth uh, depends on so many atoms there are, that were produced in stars that no longer exist. So to have life going on on Earth the way it is, the universe has had to have enough time to evolve to the point that the concentration of existing minerals and atoms were such that could produce this uh, display of life uh, we have. And here, not a galaxy, a spiral galaxy. This is somebody observing our galaxy, our Milky Way, from inside the Milky Way. So when you look at this uh, fuzziness in there, this fuzziness is is group of stars. They are so far away, they're light bland, and then it seems all fuzzy. But that is a spiral galaxy. You are seeing from inside the spiral arms of our Milky Way, like I I displayed previously in my uh, Starry Night software, which is, I don't know what it is, it's right here, right? So if you take, that's what I want to say, if you take the Milky Way alone, no, not this one, this is Milky Way from Earth, wait a second.
this one. So the sun in the Milky Way, so the sun has a planet Earth going around. So now dive into this sun and then from inside that cluster of stars, look towards the galactic center. So imagine you're, you are looking through the gas and stars that exist in the plane of the galaxy. And what we see, what we see is, is, is this picture over here. Uh, here is a star cluster it's called a globular clusters with hundreds of thousands of stars. They are very old objects and telescopes are our tools and another spiral galaxy is right there. And, and we saw a Virgo cluster in the animation and here is a uh, picture of one of these um, uh, rich clusters of galaxies. And, and with that we kind of a complete chapter one, which is one chapter that you better uh, appreciate, we use the scales for that. And probably for some of you, uh, for some of you, the scale might be too much um, because it has some math. Uh, but let me know if, if something is troublesome. You, you know what you also could do if you can't, if you can't attend the chat room, you could email me the question. And then I can discuss the question with you uh, in the chat room. And then when you can, you, you just log in and, and grab the answer. Okay, the point is to learn. Good enough? Okay, uh, I will stop the taping now. Good night to all of you.